ज्ञान तिमिरंधस्य ज्ञानंजनशलाकाय चक्षुरं मिलितं येन तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः uh just backtracking a little bit uh, i'd been speaking about saraswati puja being performed today uh that's not just some way of speaking because his name is saraswati but he is non different from saraswati the these the bhaktistan saraswati thakur is non different in as much as shuddha saraswati the the uh the internal potency of the supreme personality of godhead who is meant for glorifying him giving knowledge of him is manifest as in the person of bhakti sansarsar tako saraswati abhinna vyasa abhinna saraswati abhinna uh, there's a verse in the second canto also the inspired by saraswati Anyway, there are so many things. You know which verse I'm talking about? That it's, because it's, Srila Prabhupada doesn't actually mention Saraswati in the translation, or it comes in the Sanskrit. Um, also, that uh, yeah, he also ex- he also explained that in terms of Tene Brahma Hridaya Adi Kaviya that. Uh, inspiration within the heart of brahma by the medium of saraswati so uh yeah very prominent in the personality of bhakti sudan sarsar tako was a great dislike of duplicity misrepresentation in his early life he was much involved in jyotish um this which has two words in english astronomy and astrology which are actually very different astronomy in modern western secular terms is considered a highly respectable science and astrology is considered a uh f- uh foolish and abominable pseudo science uh, but in vedic understanding uh, the word jyotish means both astrology what is called astrology is predicated on astronomy so bhaktis and sarsar tako even before he uh took the role of a fully dedicated religious preacher well even prior to that he he was not a fully dedicated religious preacher but he was fully uh dedicated in religious activities it's it, we can't say any specific time or date but um of course all his life he was absorbed in krishna consciousness and in uh even in his school he well he got expelled from the sanskrit college for for uh taking up an issue with the with the professor who was professing atheism um i want to say but then then he took he took a job in the uh pay of the maharaj of tripura he wrote that i i, I wasn't i i his he, he, his aim was not to work and get a career but his aim was he wrote i just took up a job just to sustain myself so that i could go on in a life of hari bhajan because um what should he do there was no gorya math or iskon at the time to join <laughs> um he was quite suspect of the various babajis he wasn't inclined to withdraw from the world in that way at that time so he took up a, a job just to maintain himself but in the service of the maharaj of tripura 
Although he was the Maharaj of Chipura, he had his palace in Calcutta, where that's where all the action is, <laughs> not in Tripura. Uh, and uh, he became enemy of so many people there because he unearthed so much corruption. He was against uh, this corruption. He, uh, in the field of Jyotish, he radically altered it. There's a study of Jyotish in Bengal, but one of the main ways he did that was by uh, going against the whole... Oh, he was always fighting against the orthodoxy. Always. He went against the whole orthodoxy of, the, of the, all the, astronomy, the astrologers of Bengal, astronomers, by pointing out that the astronomical constants that they were using were long out of date because astronomical constants aren't that constant, because the, 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 the constants means the, uh, how the planets and the stars are moving in relationship to others. But that has to be revised every so often, otherwise you end up with wrong readings, wrong astrological meaning, because the planets don't move exactly to, according to... Uh, according to uh, mathematical rules. They, they, it's, there's, there may be some wobbling of the planets. Uh, even modern scientists say that, that the planets, they don't just move, they wobble also. You know what wobble means? I don't know how to say it in Hindi. Hilate, something like that. Hilana. <clears throat> So uh, he was fighting, and he he didn't like this. That uh, people, he he, would, he showed that this is actually what should be done, and people opposed him because in you know, all their life they've been using this, and their whole reputation is there. And all of a sudden, he's pointing out that all these people uh, they're all wrong. So even though they're clearly wrong, they didn't like to accept it, and so he was fighting. He's fighting all his life. He's fighting against corruption, fighting against his. School teacher Ishva Chandra Vidyasaga, who was a famous person, even in Bengal today, among Bengali intellectuals who take pride in Bengali language and culture. He was the one who standardized Bengali script and language. A great figure, polymath which means he was learned in many fields. And uh, Bhaktisthana Saraswati Thakur opposed his impersonalism. As a young man, you don't... In Indian culture, you don't do that. If there's, if there's an elderly person, highly respected, and you're a young boy, you don't go against them. You can't say they're wrong. Although historically, there have been cases. Rama Nujachan. Uh, before him, Yamunacharya. Also, he, I, I don't remember exactly the names, but he was, as a child, he was called into the, there was some big pundit, and uh, so the, this child, he, who later became known as Yamuna Acharya, opposed him by saying that, He said, well, I'm giving you a, a proposition and see if you can, uh, you can either uphold it or defeat it. He said to the pundit, big, this uh, Digvijay pundit, big little boy comes in, said that uh, the queen is a prostitute. <clears throat> yes, well, what do you do with that? So he didn't know what to say. And then he said, little boy, he can say it. He can get away without, without getting his head chopped off. And said that, was that Yamuna or Kud? He was Yamuna. Yeah. said, well, you see, the king, the king is uh, non-different from Indra, Chandra, Vayu, Vishnu. So she has so many husbands. He, was too, he didn't get the point. So, uh, 
So it is there, but in uh, some exceptional persons, they may, uh, young people, they may defy who is older. Ramanuja, of course, did that with Yada Prakash. He did so politely but firmly. Also, uh, Mandana Mishra, in, as a youth, took instruction from the Buddhists for the sake of defeating them, then stood against them, and so on. There are examples, but generally it's thought you don't stand against those who are elder. But that convention is uh, dangerous if it's used to uphold untruth. More important than etiquette is upholding the truth. And that was Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur's uh, commitment. That there are so many respected religionists, Goswamis, heads of Vaishnav society, he stood against them for their cheating. If they were cheating. He, if they weren't cheating, he wouldn't oppose them. But mostly he saw they're all cheating if they upheld uh, that one can be a Brahmin and a guru only by birth, particularly on this point, he stood against them. If they didn't, if they didn't subscribe to that, then he was not against them. Mostly those who he befriended, they were also born in Brahmin families, Acharya families, and they were initiating on that basis, but they were not opposed to Bhaktisthan Sahasrara Thakur or any other qualified Vaishnava also initiating. So it's not that if one is born in, an, in a certain family, it's not that everyone, can, everyone is qualified to be a guru if they're a Vaishnava, except someone who's born in a Vaishnava guru family. They can also do. We're not opposed to that. Srila Prabhupada also writes in the chapter 6, Bhagavad Gita purport, is it? That there are many Acharya families. So that may be. Is it in the chapter 6 purport? Yeah. There are many who, generation after generation, they, they have, uh, they, they, because from birth they train the children in, in Vaishnava Dharma. So he wasn't opposed to that, but he was opposed to persons who claim only on the basis of birth that they are a guru, even if they have no personal purity, uh, and even if they do have personal purity, but they, op they oppose others who are qualified to teach and give Krishna consciousness, who uh, also initiate. So he was very strongly against any duplicity. And he was also, uh, the, the duplicity also, uh, which was very common in uh, Bengali Vaishnav society at that time, and I saw it myself at least up to the 1980s in Bangladesh, uh, people presenting themselves as being, uh, making a caricature of being a great devotee, a show of being very humble, and imitating the characteristics of a pure Vaishnava, while at the same time being uh, materially attached, um, in many cases eating fish, smoking, and at the same time thinking that, or, or talking on a very high level, the intimate pastimes of Radha and Krishna, Leela, uh, having the uh, songs of the because mo most of the Bengali Vaishnav songs, they are about, they're, they're derived from and based on Gita Govinda, which is based on the uh, Ras Lila, the separation of Radha and Krishna, and reunion. So that was the Gorya Vaishnav culture, but Srila Bhaktisthan Sarasar Thakur, and before him Bhakti Vinod Thakur, saw that people need some more basic instructions uh, they're not. They're misusing this, and they they would misuse this for uh, the sake of indulging in their material, grossly sinful material desires. 
Because at that time and still today in India, although things are changing, you can't just take someone's wife or live with a widow. Still in India. Maybe in Bom- among some people in Bombay, but even most of the people in Bombay would not think it's at all good if uh, any man wanted to speak of someone who's representing himself as a sadhu intimately associates with someone else's wife or with a widow. Even now, this recently, this uh, Asharam Bapu and in South India, this Nityananda Paramahamsa, they've been discredited for associating improperly with women. In the West... A lot of people wouldn't care. But even then, I mean, there are Christian, famous Christian preachers, on t- big people on TV in America, household name. But then uh, more than once it happened that some very big Christian preacher was being found out to have some illicit affair and immediately their whole reputation is completely finished. So... Uh, People in Bengal at that time who wanted to indulge in uh, sexual freedom often did so under the cover of being a Vaishnava. There's a long history to this. Someday I'll research it more and speak on it if Krishna wills. So Vaishnavism is mixed up in Bengal, is mixed up with the Sahajya cult, which was which was there before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu preached Krishna consciousness, which came out of a perverse sect of Buddhists, which is mixed up with Tantra, left-wing Tantra, and all this kind of thing. So it's a big mess. Uh, but Bhaktisthan Saraswar Thakur stood against that. He abhorred this uh, deceitfulness, Pride uh, among his own. Fa- it, it, it was. Uh, it's a dichotomy. Traditionally, the Vaishnavas, they would. The the well, they were the householders and the vairagis. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, we often find the word vairagi. Uh, it's not exactly a sannyasi. We find the word sannyasi also, but in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, Leela, the only uh, sannyasis are those who accepted sannyas in Mayavad Sampradaya, including Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Although he converted Keshav Bharati, first of all, into a Vaishnava, and then took sannyas for him. But from external appearances, he was a Mayavadi sannyasi. And he even said that. Ami Sanyasi Mayavad. He said to Ramananda Rai, and some people take that literally, being foolish. But uh, the, the the renunciants in the Gorya Sampradaya, they're vairagis. They don't accept sanyas. They 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 give a vairagi means they're detached from everything, even from varnashram. Sanyas is within the varnashram system. So, so, uh, the idea is one should live very humbly. Uh, but, you know, Thako sings one song, Man Tumi Keno Sanyasi Sajete Chao, or something like this. Oh, oh my. He has a series of songs which he addresses to his mind. Why do you want to go to different holy places? Why do you want to study so many shastras? Why do you want to be a son? There's one song. Why do you want to be a sannyasi? <laughs> because the idea is that then you'll become very proud. So the vairagis, knowing that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's core teaching, Trinadapi Sunicha, one should be very humble. This is the way to, the vairagis, they leave the whole world so that they, they leave their wife, children, home, society, money, pomp, pleasure, for the sake of attaining Krishna Prema. Uh, the way, the, the key to getting Krishna Prema, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, is this 
Srirādhapī sunichta and the sahishnuta, these, these two qualities, these are required. Uh, otherwise, prem upajai, the, uh, the arising of Krishna prem cannot take place. So the vairagis, they, they leave the world, they live very humbly. Uh, humbly, this word in English has two senses. One is a sense of uh, not thinking, one not being proud, and uh, to, to consider oneself very low. And another meaning, living humbly, means to uh, live in poverty. That's another meaning. Sim- simple or, or it can not necessarily poverty, but or just living very simply without any, anything fancy. So the, in both ways, the Vairagis would live very humbly or they would attempt to uh, inculcate that, uh, live in, uh, either not have any fixed residence or mostly the Vairagis, they would have a fixed residence, but uh, just some very little shack, um, kuti, uh, and they tried to remain incognito as far as possible. And if people, if they started to become well known and praised for their austerities and their devotion, they might uh, hire a prostitute to sit outside their kuti or put fish scales outside so that people would think that they are associating with a prostitute and or they're eating fish and then they'd think, oh, he's, he's not a real devotee and then they'd leave him alone. <laughs> Gorky Shaw does Babaji also. When so many people were coming to see him thinking he's a great devotee, he think these people are just disturbing me and so he went to live in a latrine because people don't like, oh, he's a latrine, it's impure. We can't go to a latrine. If he's there, then it's more pure than the altar. <laughs> but uh, certainly more pure than the mind of the people who think we shan't go to see him because he's in a latrine. Uh, so this uh, sannyas, Pakistan Sarsar Thakur, instituted big buildings, motor cars. So the dichotomy is that He's supposed to be a humble Vaishnava, but at the same time accepting the trappings of a, of a uh, big man of the world. So he warned, don't be proud. Don't become proud. Now people, if you, you take the title Maharaj, don't be proud. And don't, don't eat so you become fat. Uh, remain simple. Ah, uh, yeah. So it's a great dichotomy that uh, he preached against pride. He said to remain humble and simple, but at the same time he accepted all the good things of the not all, but big building, motor car, meet with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, refused to meet with Prataparudra Maharaj. Even, the, even though all the devotees said to, to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's actually a very good Vaishnava. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, yes, I accept. He's a good Vaishnava. He's humble. He's got all good qualities. There's just one thing wrong with him. He's a king. The same thing, a sannyasi. Uh, he can, there may be a very good devotee. Uh, there may be a very good devotee who is very humble, renounced, absorbed in Krishna, but still a sannyasi should not associate, or a vairagi should not associate with that devotee if they happen to be in the body of a female. Even if they're a great devotee. Vairagi bhai gramya kotana shuni bekane, gramya kotana baliveh jabe mile beane. Grihete, uh, grihete charya by what is that? Jodi chaho pranay koro gorangaroshane grihe charya by ashi achobam. 
Jagarananda Pandit, saying, speaking the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, says that you're a vairagi. For a vairagi, one who has renounced the world, uh, when you meet others, don't talk topics of this world. Those were sannyasi preachers, they made them. But vairagis are not supposed to at all. No, they should have no knowledge of politics or anything of this world. Vairagi bhai grama kotam jaj na balibe jabe mele bayane gamra barta na One shouldn't hear it from others also. Uh, uh, if you want love, then you love Goranga. You already left your wife in the home. You left that love. And you came to Vrindavan. So don't desire that. So as sannyasi and, and all the members of the Gorya Mat, they, they lived in uh, opulent conditions. But don't be proud. Don't be materialist. People are offering respect. One takes sannyas. Why? Why does someone take sannyas? So that others, others will offer respect to him. Absolutely opposite to the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But there's another teaching. Jare deko tare kaha Krishna upadesh. Speak the t- teachings of Krishna to others. So to facilitate that, one may accept sannyas. That is, Bhaktisthan says, Taco saw the requirement for that. Otherwise, uh, materialistic, worldly people, they don't listen to vairagis. They're not, and vairagis avoid such people. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to avoid such people. Vishayana Amata Yoshitang's Cha. Avoid materialistic people and women. If you want to, uh, cross over the ocean of material existence. If you are niskinchan, that's another word for vairagi, one who has nothing. Uh, so, uh, he always warned against pride. He would give to his own, especially to, to the outside people, he would speak on topics of Krishna consciousness. To those who, sp- he would decry the pseudo-Vaishnavas who were duplicitous and among his own people he would often speak this uh, Sada Dambam Hidva from Raghunath Das's Mana Shiksha. Always give up this false pride. But there is one kind of pride uh, which is, is acceptable. Vaishnavi Pratishta Tate Koronishta The uh, the position of a Vaishnava, or the honor the, of a Vaishnava, that you should be fixing. We should uphold the dignity of the Vaishnavas. So to uphold the dignity of the Sampradaya, Rup, Raghunath, Swarup, this is a, we say Rupanuga Sampradaya, we don't say Chaitanya Sampradaya. The scholars, mundane scholars, they say Chaitanya Sampradaya, we say Rupanuga. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he invested the Sampradaya teachings in Rupa, Rupa Goswami was to propagate that. Rupa Raghunath, Rupa Swarup Raghunath, these three. Generally Rupa Raghunath, we say, following Krishna Das Kaviraja and Bhaktisthan Saswar Thakur. Sometimes just Rupa, sometimes Rupa Swarup also, because Swarup Damada, he... Uh, was the Aparup, the, the another manifestation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Non, his Lalita are non different from Radha or so close. She's she is called uh, Anuradha. She's always following Radha. So Surup Damada he would uh, any slight infringement of Bhakti Siddhanta he would catch it. He would not he would not allow it to come to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's ears. Bhakti Siddhanta Viruddha Arasabhas Shunile Prabhur Chete Nahoyulas. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was never happy to hear anything that was against Bhakti Siddhanta, or which was Rasabhas. So Srub Damada was appointed 
that anyone he wants to meet Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and say anything, present some teachings or poem or philosophy, first they have to go through Srub Dhammada. And he would catch if there's anything wrong. So Bhaktisthan Sarsar Thakur was just like that. Any little thing. Any little thing means it's a big thing. We may think, oh, it's just a little thing, just a little thing. But little thing means that little thing means that is disqualification from serving Krishna. Because Krishna has to be served perfectly. There's no admission to the spiritual world without serving Krishna perfectly. So that has to be who knows how to serve Krishna perfectly? Rup, Raghunath, Swarup. They know how to serve Krishna perfectly. So we have to go through them and they will. Uh, we may say, oh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is simply in bhav and prem, and why are you so harsh? And this, but the, that is the job of the devotees to protect <coughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and protect Krishna and not allow pretentious devotees to come close or to. Uh, they should not be admitted. Everyone should come to Krishna, everyone should be, go to Krishna. But some are not allowed. They're not allowed. If you don't have the right understanding, philosophy, you're either right or you're wrong. Uh, there's this relativistic idea, well, there are different shades of grey. Well, okay, that's true. May be true to some extent. But in the absolute plane, you're either allowed inside or you're not. You go to the spiritual world, you won't be allowed in. You, won't, you, you can't take your swarup. Mukti hitvanyata rupam swarupena viyavastiti. One cannot take one's original form in the spiritual world unless one is completely qualified to do so. So all wrong ideas are cut. He have, so he was against duplicity. Uh, against the ochikitsya. This is a term used by Jiva Goswami about the false Vaishnavas who are incurable. They're, they're in the guise of Vaishnavas. They are matya na krishna. They're, they, they are determined not to be Krishna conscious. So Bhaktisthan Sarasvara Thakur stood very strongly against this. That this is not the way to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Such persons, Bhaktivinoda Thakur had also said, but Bhaktisthan Sarasar Thakur took the teachings of Bhaktivinoda and presented them most forcefully. Bhaktivinoda Thakur had also said this, under a pseudonym, actually. He didn't, at least at that time, it might not have been known that it was he himself who did it, because, oh, that's another big. Another big study, Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He would, he would mix with people like this uh, Shishi Kumar Ghosh, who has made this book called uh, Nimai Charit, and in English, Lord Gauranga, which uh, Srila Prabhupada said this book, Lord Gauranga. He said, it is useless. <laughs> um, but Bhaktivinoda Thakur would have. Uh, associate with him. For some reasons he would associate with people who are not proper Vaishnavas. Reason being that at that time, and, and considering also Bhaktivinoda's position as a government servant, a householder, he felt that it was not appropriate for him to be so strongly against Everyone, and he also wanted to forge a an alliance of Vaishnavas to present that Vaishnavism, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings are actually most respectable. The general understanding, which the British especially picked up, and then they transferred to the newly educated new educated in british style and in english language the the uh, the youth of bengal new bengal at that time called 
So they felt disgust towards this Vaishnava. What is this all sex? And Krishna himself is considered to be the one at fault. This came, I'm going to include something about this in the next edition of this, if it ever comes. The, the Maharaj libel case in 18-something, it had taken place prior to Bhaktisthana Sarasura Thakur's being born in this world, appearing in this world, but it was famous up to that time, and still today, you can look it up on the internet, how there was a Balab Sampradai Guru Goswami who was taken... No, he took to court the editor of a Bombay paper who printed all articles against him for having sex with his disciples, wives, and daughters. The, the idea is that, well, you get married, uh, you can enjoy your wife as Guru Prasad. First the Guru. Has to. So it came to the... and. Uh, the British were horrified by this and it became a big thing. It was reported in the press in, in Britain also. And they think, oh, what horrible Hindu religion. And the blame came on Krishna. You see, Krishna does it and those who are his devotees, they also do it. So this misunderstanding, Bhaktisthana Sasura talked, and actually it was going on like that. The Prakriti Sahajiyas, they... Uh, yeah, there was a court case. Why would the, who made the case? The Maharaj, the Goswami, made a case against the newspaper editor. It wasn't that the newspaper editor made a case against him. He made a case against the editors for libel. Uh, so Bhaktisthan Sarasar Thakur, he then, therefore he wanted to establish this, uh, what is Prakrita and Prakrita. All these words are very important. Uh, Prakrita Sahajya, Vaishnavas are Sahajyas. In the, in the sense that Sahaj means natural, so the natural proclivity of the jiva is to love Krishna. But Prakrita Sahajya means those who. Uh, Sahaj means also something very easy. So they take a cheap, easy process on the material platform. So he stood against that. It's a, actually, from our perspective, we've, we've heard about Bhaktisthan Sarasar Thakur from Srila Prabhupada, in hindsight. But at the time, he must have been a very difficult person to understand. Oh, I was saying about Bhaktisthan Sarasar Thakur. That's what I'm saying. You can't go... In a, in, in a linear manner describing because anything you talk about there's so many things to talk about and even though I put in sections but it's, it's all one massive personality it's an extremely powerful personality fighting on all sides in all directions as, as Sridhar Maharaj said fighting, fighting with the whole world now, if we, we see Bhaktisthana Sarasara Thakur in hindsight, through the eyes of Srila Prabhupada, but at the time it must have been very uh, difficult for people to understand who is he? He's a Vaishnava, but he's so well educated, just like a Bengali gentleman, but he supports this sex cult, and that's what the Bengali elite and the... Uh, the uh, Beng the new Bengalis, the British educated, and the British themselves must have been thinking, uh, he's a spiritual person, but he's, he opposes Gandhi and the Swaraj movement, which Gandhi had presented as a spiritual movement, so we can get India free so that we can pursue our own culture and stop cow killing, people thought. And it was Gandhi who... If, if you, anyway... This cow killing wouldn't be going on in India if it were not for M.K. Gandhi. He allowed it. He said, well, we have to allow the Muslims to have their... They have to follow their religion. So it's going on. So uh, he'd presented as a spiritual quest because traditionally Indian people, apart from the Kshatriyas and maybe a few Brahminas and to a small extent maybe the Vaishyas so that they were... Well, everyone wants a good king so they can, for the Vaishnavas especially, so they can carry on their trade 
without disturbance. But otherwise, people weren't interested in politics. They don't care, they don't really care who's in charge of the country or, or, or their local area. As long as they're undisturbed and they can go on with life, they don't care. So Gandhi presented this independence movement as being spiritual because that's people, they cared about that. As, as spiritual things, these are very important. So Gandhi dressed as a sadhu, and but he was a politician. But to get the political support of the people which he knew was required to oppose the British, then he had to present it as being spiritual. And here's spiritual Bhaktisthan Saraswati supporting the British and saying, no, we don't need this independence. So it doesn't matter who's in charge. If they listen to me, the, the British can stay. If they're prepared. Or at least if they... Uh, and actually it's a fact. It's spiritually, India, since the time of independence, just went <laughs> down like anything. For, for materially and spiritually, it would have been... Well, I have a British passport, but it would have been better had the British stayed. Although I don't know about Britain today, they lost all their shakti. Not all, they still have some. So he was, he was a very difficult figure to understand. And, uh, he's, the Vaishnavs couldn't understand why he's on their case. The British couldn't, un and the British educated Bengalis couldn't understand why he's a Vaishnava. The people in general couldn't understand why he's pro-British. Uh, and the people, and the, no one could understand why he was so aggressive when even, a, even an ordinary gentleman would not be, be expected to be so aggressive. And what to speak of a sadhu... And then how he, how he took sannyas and lived in luxury. <laughs> he was so educated and so intelligent, but he used that to uphold a cult which people saw just for the lowest class of village people who wanted to indulge in the worst kind of behavior. So he was respectable in his manner of presentation, both physically, he would dress very nicely, especially when he was going to public meetings. In the mat, among his own disciples, he would be very simply dressed. You can see there are different photos. Of him. But for formal occasions, he would dress very nicely. Uh, but he was, although he was respectable in his manner of presentation because he wanted to appeal especially to the leaders of society. But at the same time, he was uh, wholly unconventional in his message. I'm going to stop now because we have to go on to Iskon Sukhundrabad to continue. So, more over there. Krishna willing, because... We're not there yet. I always have to say that. Anything can happen anytime. Is that right? Kunja Bihari. Kavi bi kuch bi ho sakta. He was doing nice service, collecting donations at the Rathiatra, and all of a sudden, motorbike hit him. So. Have to be hush. Always be aware. Mm. Anything can happen anytime. And definitely something, namely death, will happen sometime. Death can come anytime and definitely sometime it's going to come. So we should always remember smaran nityam anityatvam. Always remember everything here is temporary. Kuru punya horat.